on Ash Wednesday, we usually gather together and receive ashes on our foreheads as a mark of the beginning of the season of Lent and as a reminder that we are mortal, that one day we will die, that we are dust and to dust we shall return. Uh, this year, instead of receiving ashes, Bishop Cole invited us to gather dirt or soil from our gardens or our yards and to place them in a bowl for, as a way to mark um, how we are tending the soil of our hearts through this season. At Tyson House, we gave out cups of uh, potting soil and invited folks to uh, plant seeds at them. And I have a little seedling coming up. I wanted to share with you a reflection on uh, Jesus' parable of the sower, in which he describes different kinds of soil and the ways uh, in which seed can or cannot grow in those. It comes from Matthew chapter 13, starting in verse 1. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the crowd stood on the beach. And, he's, and he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky soil, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Reflecting on these words of Jesus, I think about the conditions of the, the soils, plural, in my, my own heart. Um, and the different kinds of distractions that I have um, from answering my own call and um, the, the various worries that I have that have choked out the life of um, maybe where, where, uh, where God is calling me or who I really am in, in the life of Christ. Um, taking assessment of the depths of connections, the connections and relationships that I have um, with friends and family, um, connections that um, have been neglected, some have been neglected and need tending, uh, some rel relationships that have been broken and need some restoration, uh, need repentance. This time of, uh, this season of Lent um, is a time where we repent, where we turn back to change our minds. Um, and as we reflect on this soil, this dirt, on this ground, how we are grounded in this life and remembering who we are in, in God, who we are in Christ. Um, I recently was reading um, a letter, one of the letters of Dietrich Bonhoeffer to his church in, um, it was written in 1944. Uh, just before the uh, Americans came into the war and um, his church was already being persecuted and was going underground and Bonhoeffer uh, wrote these words of encouragement uh, to his church um, as a, a reminder of who they are as a, um, a, an encouragement to not just be not just for um, self-preservation as if that was um, the end goal. He wrote these, these words. He says, Our church has been fighting during these years only for its self-preservation, as if that were an end in itself. It has become incapable of bringing the word of reconciliation and redemption to humankind and to the world. So the words we used before must lose their power, be silenced, and we can be Christians today only in two ways, through prayer and in doing justice among human beings. All Christian thinking, talking, and organizing must be born anew out of that prayer and action. So as individuals and as a congregation, 
let us um, remember to be grounded in prayer and in doing justice. Um, prayer and in our own hearts, cultivating that time of silence uh, before God, remembering who we are in the, in the scope and, uh, of the whole universe, and our place and our calling in it. By, and by prayer, we, we place ourselves um, in right perspective. Um, and in doing justice, we remember during Lent um, those connections that we have, our own groundedness, the connections we have with our neighbors, um, with our families and friends, with our fellow congregants, St. Jamesers, um, but also um, how those relationships are, um, are broken and how we might go, come back and tend to those things um, in our own congregation, in our city. Um, as we continue toward, um, toward the, the celebration of Easter at the end of Lent, I let this time be a, a preparation uh, for that celebration and how uh, the resurrection might be lived in our own lives, how that dream of the kingdom come um, that Jesus told us to pray for, uh, that God's will be done and kingdom come on earth as in heaven, how that celebration might be made real in our lives here in our own city, in our own town, in our own relationships. May this time be blessed. May this time uh, be filled with the love of God as we turn back our hearts toward him and prepare the soil of our own heart uh, for, um, for seeds that are being planted by the master.